Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast, episode 71. I am really looking forward to you all hearing my next guest, Ms. Chelsea Chiplin. Now, Chelsea has an unbelievable story where she says that she did not love herself. And as a result, she was in an abusive relationship. And basically, she tells the story of how she transformed her life through self-love, manifesting her dream life. And as you will quickly discover, Chelsea has this radiant energy. You're going to hear it in her voice. And she's on this path to really helping other people find their inner joy, find their happiness, so that they can also live their dream lives. I can't wait for you all to hear this next episode. It is a great one. So without further ado, please welcome Chelsea Chiplin. Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am a prosperity coach for the newly awakened or awake curious, driven overachiever and overdoer. After running a successful acupuncture practice in Boston for 12 years, I decided to hang my hat by closing the practice and pursue what it is that I'm really meant to do in this world and that is to serve humanity online on a global scale using my background in chinese medicine along with the brain science of habits spirituality and divine masculine and feminine energy balance i am here to help you not just understand but know how powerful you are and that you are the person who is responsible for having the finances inner peace, radiant health, and energy, aka the fire, in your life that you've always desired. My intention with this podcast is to serve humanity, no matter what gender you identify as, to help bring out the divine feminine goddess in each and every one of you. As you probably are already aware, the world is changing and is begging for the goddess to come out in each and every one of you. So fire goddesses, stay tuned. Hello, Fire Goddesses. Welcome to another episode of the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel. I am your host of the podcast. And today I have a very, very special guest that I can't wait to chat with, Ms. Chelsea Chiplin. Hi, Chelsea. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited and grateful that you took the time today to speak to the goddesses. And, you know, I just can't wait to dive in and learn more about your story and how you help people. I know that you're known as the happy babe on Instagram and just you just provide so much light there. So I would love if we could just start off by you letting the goddesses know who you are and how you help people. And and maybe we could just start diving into your story a little bit. Okay, perfect. So. I am Chelsea Chiplin. I am a transformational coach and a hypnotherapist. I am from Alberta, Canada, and I am 30 years old. So I don't often associate with age, and I believe that we are just our energy, but I've always felt like an old soul and really drawn to the realm of spiritual, spirituality, awakening, and just being connected to my higher self. So that's kind of a little bit about me. And yeah, yeah, we can definitely dive deeper into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love and you know, I would, um, I, I love how you said that you're, you know, you gave your age, yeah. but you're like, but basically age means nothing, right? Like I am totally on that in that philosophy too. Like I feel like, you know, I have a big decade birthday coming up this year and I'm like, 
what does that even mean, right? Like I have friends from of all different ages, right? And I just feel like it's just a number. So I love how you you mentioned that and you are an old soul. I can totally see that. Yeah, I feel that all the time. Like even when I was 16 years old, getting into this, you know, law of attraction and I never felt my age. I always felt older than what I was. So mm -hmm. it helped me on my journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love to know more about like specifically how that, you know, ha having that old soul wisdom helped you on your journey. And if you could just share with the goddesses listening a little bit about what brought you here and, and what caused you to do what you're doing now. Yeah, so the story really, my transformation really started about five years ago when I left a very, very abusive relationship. Um, it was reflecting the way I felt internally. And that was the reason why I attracted this individual into my life was because I never truly loved who I was. So when I was 18 years old, I came across this, my, my ex-partner, and I met him, and I could remember the night I met him, and I felt sick in my stomach. And I remember being told in my body, like, it's like my intuition told me, do not go with this guy. This guy is not good for you. I didn't listen. <laughs> because I ended up being with the guy for eight and a half years, <laughs> you know, and the greatest lessons of my life came from it. And that is, um, wow, there's so many different places we could go there, Chelsea. And yeah. I, I really believe that, um, I mean, I'm getting chills because um, I know that this story is gonna really resonate with so many people. And also I can relate to what exactly you said when you met your, your partner because or your your previous partner because our bodies tell us things don't they and um unfortunately you know in culture we're not necessarily taught that and well some of us are so um but i also like what you said about how that partner brought you so many lessons and you brought did. you to where you are today he did. And one thing that I could recall about, you know, the five years ago, I was reading this book. And this was when I really became into developing myself. At first, it started with developing my body, I really went down the fitness route of things. And I started to work on my body. And then I started to realize, you know what, I got to go deeper here and start working on my mind. So I started reading books. And I remember this one book I read, and in the book, it said, you cannot save everybody. You cannot save anyone. And actually, you can only save yourself. So that was a huge moment for me, because that's when I'm like, this is it. I am ready to change my life. And it was the beginning of a spiritual awakening and a spiritual journey and diving into discovering who I really am. And was it, so you said that was how long ago when you read that passage? Was well, that about five years ago. After your relationship ended. I, I decided to end the relationship a month later. Wow, Chelsea. Yeah. It was courageous and huge for me to leave because I, you know, you didn't, I didn't feel safe to leave because like I said, it was very abusive. He was what we classify as a narcissist. Mm -hmm. uh, so I felt very afraid to leave that relationship because I feared for my life, really, at the end of the day. And when I did decide to leave, it was the most courageous thing I've ever done for myself. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And, you know, for the, for the goddesses listening, I know that there's people that hear this and you know, um, I just want to honor you, first of all, Chelsea, for sharing that and for your courage. And for those listening out there who may be in similar situations that feel that they truly cannot leave 
um, know that there are plenty of people out there who love you and are available to hold space for you. So, um, you know, just, uh, I, I have so much reverence. So I would love to just know a little bit more, Chelsea, like, so you decided to, you decided to leave your, your relation, you were married to this person? I was married, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you do next? So, you know what I did? <laughs> um, I think this is kind of funny, but not for him. But <laughs> um, when he left for work, I packed all my things and I left the house because again, feared for my safety. I didn't know what he was going to do or how he was going to react. Yeah. And I really did have to just leave in that way because again, you don't know what is going to come of it when you're in that situation. And especially I had been abused in all aspects prior during the eight years. I had been in this abusive state and almost like survival mode, right? So I had to do what I had to do <laughs> to, to leave that. Yeah. Yeah. I can only imagine how um, frightening that must have been at the time too, you know, like just such a big step, but knowing like, was there a part of you that knew like what was waiting for you on the other side or were you just in like complete survival mode? You know, there was this part of me that kept guiding me. There was my higher self that I would connect to. And often I would hear, hear something in the back of my head and it would say, you are destined for greatness. You are meant for more. And so I kept listening to that voice. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> kind of getting you know that thing that but <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's so powerful and again just going back to the fact that um we are we have this built-in intuitive system that is available I truly believe it's available to everybody and I know that there's people out there that are like but I'm not intuitive right it's like I'm not creative I'm not this I'm not that and and I'm curious, Chelsea, if you have any thoughts about that for people who are saying, you know, they don't have that wisdom or, you know, how, how can I tap into that wisdom if I don't have it? Yeah. So this is something I often tell my students and the people that I work with is, you know, they look up to me and they put me on this pedestal and they think I'm some wonderful human being that has created magic, which I have, don't get me wrong. But I always make sure that they know that they too are so powerful mm -hmm. and that they have gifts. And if we learn to tap into those gifts, we can uncover and discover what they are because we all have them. We all have them. And, you know, in your situation, when you felt what you felt in your stomach, what, what went through your mind at the time? Like, were you tuned in to you know, this is something or was it like, oh, you know, it's nothing. Like, what was that experience like for you when you felt that in your stomach and how did you respond to it at the time? So I could remember being like, I almost could hear a voice and I could hear something along the lines of this is a bad guy. Do not go with him. And I'm like, okay, but I kind of shoved it away. I kind of, I wasn't really paying attention to that because at the time I was like, not really connected to my intuitive abilities. And so I just ignored it really. Yeah. And at what point, like for those that are like, yeah, you know, I've had that before, but I, I don't trust it. Or like, how do I know if it's real? You know, all the, the questions that many people often have, like, for you, how did you really learn to tap into that intuitive voice and know that it is actually very, very true? Yes. So great question. Um, so really learning to trust myself and dive into the, the love for myself. And again, that really started at the beginning of my journey of awakening and 
really tapping into that higher knowing that, you know what, this voice that I hear, it has something to say and to start listening to it. Mm. Yeah, because it is, it's my higher self. It's my, my guides that are helping me, guiding me along in this journey. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to, you know, I want to mention too, it, it shows up what the way I describe it is that often it shows up as a whisper, right? It's just like this little like, hmm, but there's the only way I can describe intuition is that there's this energy behind it, right? And it's often this fleeting, like, like for me, if I feel something intuitive, it's like, I want to take action or I want to do something about it, or I want to go online and, and like research something. And often it's fleeting and it, it leaves pretty quick. Um, and I think another piece that's really important is that there's no fear attached to it yes. with intuition. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of people are like, how do I know if it's like, you know, like people who talk about getting on an airplane, for example, and they're, they're like, oh, I got this intuitive feeling that I shouldn't go. Well, is it fear or is it actual intuition? And um, I love what you said that you just started and you just went, you know, gradually just learned how to love you, love yourself, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, that's what it was. I had to love myself for all of myself and accept every part of me, you know, the shameful parts that I was, because I used to be in so much shame for who I was. And I have, um, I have Native American descent. So I was all I grew up as being ashamed of who I was. And I really, really had to dive into why, why was I ashamed? Well, it was generational. A lot of it was being ashamed from generations ago. So really had to uncover. And now I love everything about me. I'm like, you know what? I'm a pretty amazing person. <laughs> you are. You are, Chelsea. And you know, I, I, I probably, I don't do the, I haven't been doing the podcast on video for a while, but I always like to acknowledge my guests. Um, who aren't able to see the video or see the guests, but I'm looking at Chelsea right now. And according to my computer screen, you're sitting in a purple room or a pink room. Pink. Yeah. Yeah. Pink. <laughs> yeah. It's very beautiful. I feel like there's this beautiful lighting and I can just feel that you are this powerful being. And I already knew that because I knew you before, but um. <laughs> And it's been really remarkable because we've known each other now for about a year and a half or so mm -hmm. to see how you have really stepped into your power, like big time, big time stepped into your power and it shows and you glow. Mm. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I received that. And that's something else that I want to bring up too is um, learning to receive compliments. Um, because again, remember, I used to be ashamed of who I was. So I wouldn't receive compliments in a way of, I would just brush it aside. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, you know what? The soul in me honors the soul in you. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for acknowledging that in me. Yeah, because it's really, again, not something that, especially as women, but I think everybody, right? But women, especially, we're told to not be too big or too bold or mm -hmm. to talk about ourselves. And if we're given a compliment, right? It's like, oh, this old thing, right? Oh, your dress is beautiful. Oh, this old thing, right? Yes. And, but what most people don't realize is that being able to receive, even if it's a compliment, is part of this energy system of giving and taking right so if you don't have what you want in life whether it's you know the house or the the partner or the money that might be a good place to start how are you able to receive yes absolutely 
Oh, love that. So I would love to, to, to Chelsea dive into the whole self-love thing because I feel like it's kind of a hot topic. A lot of people are talking about it, but not enough people are talking about it because again, of this thing of loving ourselves, there's this misconception that when we love ourselves, we're narcissistic or we're into ourselves. Like it's, it's, it's often associated negatively. So for those people that are, so I'd like to pick this apart actually. Um, they're like, I, cause I would consider you're a self-love expert at this point. I mean, you've been through it. I, I would consider myself. Yeah. You know, I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say so. So for those people that are having, maybe having difficulty receiving, or they don't have, you know, what they want out of life and what would be a good practical place to start with? And, and, and how did you approach self-love? Like, in the beginning, what was it like for you? Was it easy? Was it hard? So it really came down to one thing. And that was building my habits. So the repetition of becoming consistent with whether it was working out, eating good, um, just filling my cup up. So I really, really had to, yeah, learn what is even a habit? right? How do I build habits? Mm -hmm. How do I build this repetition in my life? How do I become more committed? And that's really, I think about, you know, when I started my journey, again, that's, it started with exercising. And I really started to love my body because I used to hate who I was. I hated my body. And I was always a pretty small person to begin with. And when I would look in the mirror, I would see, I would often say in my head, I would say, oh, what a fat whale you are. Like I would say the meanest things to myself. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, I really had to change and change and transform that self-talk. And yeah. And then another thing that I would highly, highly recommend people to do is invest in themselves. So invest in a coach, invest in somebody that believes in you and is going to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, you know, that brings me back to about when in investing in yourself, a lot of people don't think that they deserve that. Right. Yes. And it just it's this whole cycle. And you mentioned generational right it comes it's it's not us really yeah. what we learn and how we are and how we treat and talk to ourselves we learn that by the age of seven right and all those negative stories all those loops those have been so if you're 50 years old or however old you are those stories have been with you since you were seven years old mm -hmm. And, and the cool thing that I should bring up too is, so I was adopted at the age of four years old. So this was something that did come from that age was the feeling of not being good enough. So from that young age, when, you know, to find out and discover that I was adopted and I was like, oh, my mom didn't want me, you know? So all these stories were going on in my head. And it's so, it was so far from the truth. That was not the truth. She gave me up because she was an alcoholic. And she did the best thing for me. She gave me the gift of life. Mm -hmm. That was an act of love, wasn't it? It was. And now that I can see from that higher level of thinking, whereas I used to think when I was younger, when I was a teenager, that I wasn't good enough. So she threw me away, you know, and therefore I attracted a partner that treated me as such as well. Right. So it was all a reflection of how I felt on the inside. Yeah. And when it comes to partners and, and relationships with your, your parents or whomever, if you don't resolve 
whatever it is that you were in, you know, whatever problems you had with your partner or with your mom or whomever in that relationship, you know, those people, right? And, and I'm speaking to the audience at this point, but, you know, we all have those friends that go out with somebody and then they break up and then they find somebody else and then they have the same problem, like the same thing keeps coming up. And oftentimes it's the normal reaction is, well, what is, you know, why do I keep attracting these, these guys that have similar issues? Mm -hmm. And this is really an opportunity as you demonstrate in your experience, Chelsea is, well, what's the common denominator? Yes. Yes. Right. And it's an invitation. Every challenge is an invitation to look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Totally. And the beautiful thing, Angela, is now I have a partner who he reflects who I am as a person. He loves himself and not in a narcissistic way either. He mm -hmm. truly values and like, you know, he has a personal trainer. He takes care of himself. He he goes for pedicures and manicures and massages like he truly loves himself to where he fills up his cup and he shows me that he loves me that much as well and it's just so beautiful to see that in a partner yeah that is really beautiful to see and witness and I know I've seen some of your photographs that you've shared on social media and it's just so beautiful to yeah you know it, it, for those that are like um I'm never going to find that partner, right? I just wanted to let you know and to use this interview with Chelsea to really let you know that anything's possible. Anything is possible. Oh. And to go back, actually, you said something about habits, right? So mm -hmm. what was the timeline of, if you don't mind me asking, of when you attracted your part, current partner and you mentioned the habits of, of really developing your self-love practice. So when did you meet your partner? Was it yeah. like before, after, during? So this is, um, I'll make it as short as possible, but um, I met Jay, this is my partner now, when I started my massage business practice, sorry. And I had met him, he, he had been, yeah, a month into starting massaging. I had just finished massage school and I met him, but nothing was like that. I didn't think of him like that. Not at all. Because Jay, consider this too, he's 49 years old and I'm 30. So we also have this age gap relationship, which again, age doesn't, it's just energy at the end of the day. And so I met him during the time of developing myself and again didn't think of him in that way at all and then it was about a month after leaving my my ex-partner I got with Jay a month later because obviously that's when I was ready for him you know what I mean like it was just I became the person that Jay needed in his life Mm hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. And that's really, you know, a relationship. Uh, there's a psychic that I sometimes listen to on on YouTube, Elizabeth April, and she um, have you have you heard of her? No, but I want to write her name down now. <laughs> you know, I feel like when I need a little dose of, you know, she's really cool. She channels, you know, Galactic Federation and goes she goes way out into, you know, yeah. dimensions and she talks about partnerships sometimes and she says you know I'm actually okay with being single mm -hmm. but I like to be in a partnership because my partner reflects to me what it is I need to understand in myself and I just thought that was like such a powerful statement yes for so many reasons but it, it basically I remember, I'll just, I don't want to go too far into this either, but 
when I was in sixth grade, that's when I started watching soap operas, right? My, my parents were both working and I learned about soap opera, this one soap opera that my friend was watching. I was not allowed to watch stuff, stuff like this, but um, my parents were at work and I would go home and watch this soap opera and I could not, it was like this addiction, right? I was like, I can't wait to go home from school and watch the soap opera. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm what, like 11? Like, mm -hmm. this is what love is all about. And it was, there was so much victimhood, right? Like, you know, victimhood meaning like he did this to me or she did that to like lack of responsibility for why things happen to us for those who hear the word victim mentality and aren't really sure what that is. And I love how you mentioned that when you met Jay, he was what you guys were what you needed at that time. Yeah. And what a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah, he's, he's the light of my life. And it's like kind of piggybacking off what you said about the love thing. So I think of love as just experiencing a soul in another body, like you're experiencing yourself in another body, your soul in another body. And I'm like, that is beautiful. When you think of it like that, he's just reflecting back to me who I am. Yeah, at a soul level, like he is the embodiment of love. He, he has shown me what it's like to truly be generous in life. And to give with an open heart, like, I see this man, he, like today, for example, he, he was talking about how he's going to start, long story short, is there's a guy in our town who is going through some troubling times, sick wise, and he wants to start paying this guy's rent, just from his heart. And I'm like, oh my God, like, you're just showing me what it is like to be, you know, almost like a Mother Teresa in a way, right? Like, yeah, giving from the heart, Father without, Jay, without needing recognition either. Like, he would never tell anyone this except me, right? Yeah. He doesn't need that recognition, and to me, that's like that's what lights him up is giving from the soul and the heart. So. Yeah, that is really beautiful. And, you know, what I'm hearing is just um, unconditional mm -hmm. love, right? Un and that really is what love is all about, right? When this the shaman that you're fam also familiar with, Don Javier, um, he talks about um, when love becomes conditional, it's not really love. It, it's lo that is love from the ego, right? Mm -hmm. And um, true love, like when we think of true love, it's not a Disney fairy tale, but it's actually unconditional love. It's loving not only the other person, but loving yourself and then loving that person for who they truly are. Yes, and that's a, that is such a beautiful story, Chelsea. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely, thank you for allowing me to share that because again, it's it's so important that we understand that we are reflecting reflective human beings, right? We reflect back to us mm -hmm. what we're feeling inside, <laughs> and that's so important. It's so important, yeah. Thank you so much for, yeah. for sharing, sharing what you shared. And, um, you know, I, I just really, when we share our stories, I've become a big fan of opening up and starting to share more personally. And then just on the podcast, I, I really feel that this podcast is trending in more of a, a direction of, of love, yeah. showing up in a loving way and serving from love. Because when we, when we serve from that place, then it allows other people to open up and be who they are and to feel safe in who they are. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, just kind of coming back to when we love ourselves, we can truly be our authentic selves and show the world who we really are. And 
The world needs us, right? The world truly needs love right now. Yeah, the world really does. I mean, that's all this stuff that's going on, right? And it's been going on forever since humanity has been in existence. But I do feel hopeful that we really are shifting, you know, because of the ripple effect. And when we change on an individual level, when we tap into self-love and that unconditional love that we spoke of and create that ripple, that is really when the world changes. The world's not going to change from our ego. It's going to change at the soul level. So uh, I love this conversation, Chelsea. And I'm just curious to know when somebody works with you, what typically are they what would be like a typical situation? Like what what are they, what are they dealing with primarily? Like how is that manifesting? Yeah. So I typically attract people who again, have that lower self-esteem. They don't put themselves on a higher standard. They don't believe in themselves. So I find that again, like I'm attracting people who are old versions of me in a sense, in a way, And like I said, I've tapped into my confidence. Confidence really is just a way of being. And that's what I help others to understand is who can they be? Who who do they want to start being? And how to start shifting into that higher level, that higher self version of who they truly are. And so, yeah, I, I find that That's exactly the people I attract, old versions of me. (laughs) Yeah, so true, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, you know, your your work is so needed. I mean, the work that, um, I, I just feel, you know, there's no mistake that we're alive during the time that we are alive. You know, I really do believe in that. There's no mistakes ever. The universe doesn't make mistakes. And, um, you know, we are here at a very pivotal moment and I just can't be any any more grateful to be able to share and show up this way and to know you Chelsea and honor you so thank you so much thank you for for being on the podcast thank you for doing what you do you are a light in this world it's so beautiful (laughs) Thank you, Chelsea. I received that. Thank you so much. So I'm going to put, um, I'll put all of your information in the show notes, but for those that are listening that want to just quickly jot it down, how can people find you to work with you or to find out more about you? So the best thing right now is I am on Instagram at, at the happy babe underscore. And that is where I share all things happiness, self-love, and just helping people to raise their vibration. And the best way to work with me is to, I, I do have a link in my Instagram bio where we can connect. And I'll send that to you as well. And I will connect you, your people with that as well. So sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chelsea. It was a pleasure to have you on today. I love diving into all things love and it was an honor. So thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. If you have found value in this podcast, please share this podcast with those you care about. As you probably already know, in order for the world to change, we need to change. So spread the word by sharing this podcast or by leaving a review in iTunes. Until next time, Fire Goddess, be radiant, be fiery, and be powerfully authentic. Take care.